Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Bengal Tiger Podcast. I'm Matthew Bruni. Joining me once again is Shay Dixon, who's trying to figure out how the camera works. We're back in the auxiliary media room of Tiger Stadium. Yes. So if you're watching, this is... Yes. Here we are. We do have a way out. <laughs> the door does open. You, nobody needs to save us, but yes. they're cutting the field. We are some of the last people in Tiger Stadium, and what was an extremely hot day. I went down yes. and spent the right until kickoff <laughs> on the field, and I came up and was like, I think I not, might need to go home and shower. Yeah. Uh, the east side kind of cleared out after halftime because either they had to go get fluids or they tapped out. It was brutal today. Yeah. Um, obviously, 17-17 at halftime did not help the frustrations of the fans, uh, but then also just being in 90-plus yeah. degree heat. Uh, no LSU fans thought fun. UCLA was ever going to win that game. No, no. Um, I think, um, and just to start off general, 34-17 win for LSU, obviously improves to 3-1 and one on the year. Um, South Alabama next week, then by, then Ole Miss. So um, everything, you know, in front of them that we've talked about, we said going into this game, um, you know, everything is in front of them and they just have to continue to get wins and kind of see where, you know, it goes from there. 34 to 17, where do you want to start? LSU 454 yards of offense, uh, UCLA 295. Uh, generally a, a good game for LSU's offense and the defense came alive in the second half. I think that in a way this was the ultimate – LSU game of how the season's played out so far, like started yeah. slow, losing yeah. after the first quarter, tied at halftime, and yeah. then you pull away in the second half and you win convincingly to the point where, what, it was a 17-point win, they were favored by 21, had Kyron Lacey on the opening drive not dropped a ball on third yeah. down, they're probably still driving, they're getting at least three there if not a touchdown. This offense is what it is, which is a really good passing offense that is trying to find – consistency in the run game. Josh Williams will always be there as a vet, mm -hmm. but now we've seen Caden Durham again contributing in the pass or in the run game this time catching a ball uh, and housing it showing the speed. Yeah. So if they can get 100 or so yards, I think they went right at that 102. This, 102. If you can get a little bit more than that come SEC play and throw the ball like you do for 300 a game, then you should be in every game minus maybe an old miss who can throw for yes well you'll have to keep pace 700 on you <laughs> yeah. but my point is i think this team i wrote about this on the bengal tiger you can go check it out uh and shout out to all the the members uh that are out there listening but as they'll read and i think everyone agrees like this is kind of what we expect this is what we expected after three games but also it is a good sign because Yes, you start slow. Well, they normally start slow. Yes, you pulled away like you did after halftime against Nichols. Well, that was expected South because Carolina. these are the two games. And the South Carolina and the USC games were ones that were decided in the final minute, yeah. really. You know, with eight seconds left and a minute left, yeah. you win when you lose one. And, you know, I think that moving forward, when you're facing teams that are near your level – or in that same range, yeah. for better or worse, I think they're – I don't want to call it up or down to competition, but they're just going to be in a fight into the end with them. Yeah. When they're playing teams that they are better than, they will eventually pull away. Yeah, uh, I think we said it going into the year, this, or, or maybe after a game or two in, in this season, is that this team is not you know, dynamic enough on either end to really just put teams away the way that I think we want LSU teams and LSU fans want them to, to put a team like UCLA away. Uh, the defense still has a long ways to go. Um, Brian Kelly said it was maddening the first half mistakes. He said so, like at going to halftime on the break on the on the broadcast, uh, how frustrated he was, and to to let this UCLA score, team score 17 points in one half on you is is unacceptable. Um, but it was good to see them at least bounce back and and have have a good second half. Um, great, you know, a great second half. I mean, it yep. was a tale of two halves in that regard that the defense. UCLA had four possessions in the second half. Three of them were punts. One was a pick. Yeah. So a perfect second half for the defense. Yeah. Um, again, like you said, when you get into these SEC games, uh, because UCLA going into this game, there's a reason we both had them winning, LSU winning significantly, because UCLA to this point in the year has not shown anything, a pulse really on offense, right? 13 point, or 16 points against Hawaii, 13 against Indiana. Um, so – that's kind of where you start with the defense. It's, it kind of just is what it is. You have to take the personnel. I mean, Brian Kelly basically says that every po every press conference. He's like, we just got to make the, make the best of what we have here. It's not perfect. We don't have the talent that we need. Um, but ultimately, you got to clean up the mistakes, which they did in the second half. So I give them credit there. 
but ultimately it's hard for me to like get too excited about defense performance where UCLA had that first half where you're just you can't allow an offense that I think is is poor to hang around like that. I mean, LSU held South Carolina to basically no yards in the third quarter mm-hmm. of that game a week ago, came out nice after half on defense. And to see it again this week I think is a good sign because you're seeing them face in-game problems and then correct them at halftime. Yeah. Or you're seeing guys make plays that the Swinsons of the world who have had back-to-back really big games now – to where this havoc count, you know, that Blake Baker, the D.C., talks about, like he wants the havoc number to go up. Uh, in 2022, they averaged uh, 2.1 sacks a game. These are the three years of the Kelly era. Uh, 2.4 sacks a game a year ago. Uh, right now, three sacks a game, 12 and four games. So you're pacing well ahead of what your season total in sacks was, and it's evident. They get after the quarterback a lot more, and it pays off for them. The defensive line, I think, is – not just the strength of this defense. It's honestly a strength of this team at, the, at this point. I think yeah. every single game the defensive line has come ready to play. Um, and they are who they are on the interior. Yes. Losing Guillory, your best guy on the interior. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, you've patchworked it, but the ends are really, really good. <laughs> like, Savion yeah. Jones and Swinson are a yeah. hell of a tandem. Yeah, and Womack got in the game a little bit, made some plays. Uh, you know, we saw some Relaford in there, moved around Shand as well. Uh, the defensive line is, I mean – like we said, going into the year, it was like we knew defense attack was a question. We knew the ends were good. But they've all kind of come together and stepped up collectively to really bother every offense that they've played this year. I mean, USC, even if you go back to week one, I think they were really good in that game. So you have a defensive line that sets the tone. It's just figuring out the back end and how you can make more competitive plays and not get as many balls caught on you or not have those type of plays that honestly just are backbreakers, really, um, even on third downs or even on, on shot plays where Ethan Garbers was able to, you know, convert on some plays that typically LSU defensive backs would make those plays. Whether And that's not just the corners. I think that's also the safeties where Sage Ryan gave up one. Major Burns had a nice PBU and then gets beat for a slant for a first down. It's like Jardin Gilbert, you know, hit or miss. Deshaun McBride hit or miss. So all around the defensive backs just have to be – more competitive and just kind of make a little bit more plays in the back end because if they do that then I'm starting to get encouraged about this defense but UCLA is might be is definitely one of the worst offenses on their schedule and now we look ahead to a South Alabama to Ole Miss to now go on the list at one point too we need to credit I mean they have Eric Bieniemy as an OC they Garbers made some plays in the first half like they there did. were some nice they moments did. at UCLA where they made plays. Every team makes, LSU but defense. every team makes plays against LSU's defense. Yeah, every every, plays, every we, team makes plays. We against come on here and it's like defenses that are not. Well, top Nichols broke 30 a league run or defenses. something like that. So it's like, I'm I'm with you in terms of the second half was a lot better. They're so. better than they were a year ago. Yes. Oh, yeah. there's no hesitation yeah. in that. They're better. They're better. And they're getting better. I think as I'm the first third they're, of the season's down. I think that still, across that time, I can point to progress they more were, than I would point to. They're better. Oh, you're getting worse. They're better. Um, it's just – it's concerning. I, the linebackers' lack of, like, playmaking. Well, here's the thing. We talk about the Havoc, right? The defensive sacks, line I love. 12 I'm sacks. I'm just going to say I love the defensive line. 12 sacks. Yeah. 11 of the sacks are from D linemen. One's from Sage Ryan. Yeah. So your linebackers have given you no – they've yeah, done nothing been, in the Havoc this, department. That's not even a, like, bad thing per se. It's, it's like a surprise. It's I expected – well, Whit Weeks was – I remember I was sitting in front of him, basically, and he was like – man, we just blitz a lot as linebackers now. And I'm like, okay, okay, yeah. And then we went to practice and we saw it. We saw Whit Weeks and Harold Perkins and these guys. And now it's like, now they're kind of getting lost in the shuffle. They so. didn't even have any hurries tonight in the linebacker. Yeah, it, it's, that's been the most interesting aspect of it. So I'm interested to see if that changes or how that goes. But um, ultimately, while the pass defense wasn't great, I thought the run defense was better. Again, defense line controlled that for the most part. Pin, I thought made a couple nice tackles. Um, Had a forced fumble that got called back. Yeah. So, so again, positives, negatives. The defense is what it is here. Uh, we'll, I think yeah, it's going to be a lot. Yeah, we know what to expect, right? Yeah. So, what does it look like next? Again, we'll get into all, all that later, but, like, South Alabama is better offensively than UCLA. Ole Miss is a whole different animal. But it's like, as, play, as it continues to go, they have to continue to improve. Well, I think the formula is found on offense. You can pass the ball on anybody, yeah. and then if you can – run the ball in the spots you need to, then you can close out games. If Lacey doesn't drop that third down pass, I think – To start the game. Yeah, I think this game – I think we feel a lot better 
Um, I feel fine. This is exactly no, what I thought would happen in this game. I said they would score 17, and they were a <laughs> touchdown <laughs> short of what I thought they would score on offense, LSU. I don't feel as I don't feel as good. I don't feel as positive. Um, but I do think the offense, especially in a low possession game where LSU ran out the clock, obviously took a knee at the end of the first half, and then ran out the clock in the fourth quarter. Eight possessions, they had four touchdowns, two field goals, and obviously the Lacey drop could have been another field goal or score. So you're looking at it seven out of eight possessions I feel really, really good about. Um, it was just kind of a lower possession game, so 34 points might not be reflective of I don't want my – I say I expect it. That's not a – it's not a definite, like a positive, no matter what. Like, okay, this yeah, is yeah. just what I expect. Okay, yes, I, I get what you're saying. But even Vegas had the over under on UCLA team total 17? at 17. Yeah. So this is about how they expected it to unfold. It I just guess. unfolds where it you're tied so, at halftime, you're losing so in the first fast. quarter, and it's like, what are we getting into? And then in the second half, it's a they like, can't move the ball. You force them yeah. to, the only four possessions are punt, 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 pick. And, and it's not like that, on not the uh, not that order, and your offense is good. Yeah. I mean, on UCLA's field goal, they had two guys running wide open. It gets called back for a touchdown. It gets called back for a hold. There's just so many mistakes right now, and that's we will say going to get exposed. Zy Alexander out of concussion, evidently. That's why he didn't go yes. back in. And okay. then uh, Harold Perkins left with a knee injury, kind yeah. of limped his way to the locker room with yeah. the training staff, and BK afterwards did not give. Obviously, he doesn't have any update of it. it requires yeah. going to look at Harold's knee. Uh, but they play South Alabama next week, bye week, and then Ole Miss. So uh, we will hear about his uh, injury status uh, in the coming days, I'm certain. Um, but we did give out game, game balls on both sides, MVPs. Uh, Mason Taylor on offense uh, was our choice, correct? Um, yes. That, a, a day I, where Nuss yeah. throws for a season high, 352. 73% passer on 44 attempts is a great day. Uh, three touchdowns, threw to nine different guys, like did everything you wanted him yeah, to do, never awesome. turned it over, awesome. um, made some high level throws, uh, and also took what they gave him a good yep. bit. Which he is started, good to see. I think, the, what was it, the start of the third where he forced a couple? Well, not yeah. forced. I think they were kind of there, but it doesn't just, matter. They drove for touchdowns on all of them. Yeah. But I'm saying those are like, those counted to. And give them on those two after half, the offense has to go 90 plus yards on both those drives, that, and they score touchdowns on both of them. That and was not the on game. big plays, it was double digit, you know, snap drive. Yeah. I thought, again, this team is so much different in the second half of games than the first half of games, really throughout Brian Kelly's tenure. Um, but I thought the poise of Nussmeyer and them to UCLA punts, what was it, the first drive was at, out of the second half was started at the four, and the second drive started at the eight, I Yeah, it was a 96 was. and a 92. Yeah. I mean, those are – that's incredible. 14-play drive and 11-play drive. And it wasn't like drive. an 80-yard play touchdown. No, it, was it was double-digit snap drives. Yep. Yep, it was consistent. So that that the poise of Nussmeyer in this offense, I I thought the offensive line protected a lot better. Obviously, um, I thought the the run game is the run game. You know, you talked about it in, in, in a sense. I did think they were more physical in the run game. You know, it felt like they had those yeah. pushes a little bit more. Um, but you know, it is what it is. And then the pass game, I thought the, the was just efficient. Mason Taylor, Aaron Anderson, those guys. That's a quarterback's dream to have those two kind of safe. Um, options there that can kind of get you some yards after the catch as well. So I think ultimately we're just kind of waiting on to see if Chris Hilton, when he comes back, yeah. if he can push the ball a little bit more down the field because, you know, as much as I like C.J. Daniels and Kyron Lacey. He's got to be back at full strength, though, to yes. have the speed to be able to take a top off a of defense. Yeah. So, and so, again, maybe by Ole Miss we circle it. Uh, but as we started this conversation, I sidetracked on us. Uh, Mason Taylor, uh, who we knew would be a massive piece to this team on offense, uh, targeted 10 times, more than anyone on the team, caught eight passes, more than anyone on the team, 77 yards, yeah. more than anyone on the team. Uh, but kudos to Aaron Anderson, who has stepped up, and he, talking about Chris Hilton being out, Aaron Anderson has delivered in a major way. Uh, he grabs six uh, catches on eight targets, goes for 75, uh, had a long of 21, but he's the only guy who goes into double digits uh, on average yards per catch this game for LSU, uh, just above 12. He's a dynamic playmaker. Um, a shout out to Josh Williams and Caleb Jackson. Were the, all the runs perfect? No, but both finish with more than four yards of carry. Yep. Uh, Josh Williams had a big 23 yard run, also scored a touchdown, so he goes over 60. And while Caden Durham, six carries for 14 yards, he got the same number of carries as Caleb Jackson, didn't have the same rushing production, but he did catch a pass that, well, caught two passes, yeah. but uh, one of his passes he takes 35 yards. And last week it was all the 
breaking tackles, keeping his balance. This week it was, oh, there's the speed speed that gets you an LSU track offer. Yeah. They just dumped it out to him in the flats, and nobody was catching him. And he made ran right down the sideline, and everyone sort of just gave up from also, there. Also, uh, shout out Kyle Parker. First, uh, yeah, first, first, t- touchdown. first touchdown. First touchdown, 45 yards. Nussmeyer drops it in a bucket. And he makes the catch while being, like, grabbed as well. So, really nice play by him. Um, so, yeah, him – uh, Trey Des had a catch. Xavion had a couple. So, um, it's – yeah, like you said. Kyron had a quiet game. Three Kyron for 23. Did have a quiet but game. you have to go watch and watch some of these. I bet if you go back and watch these games, they're making sure Kyron is not going to, yeah. you know, tear him apart and yeah. keep a couple eyes on him at all times. Yeah. So, or, but at least four eyes yeah. on him, not, not two. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, overall, I mean, I feel the same about the offense. Uh, it's efficient. It's poised. Um you know, it's getting the run game going at times, uh, but ultimately it's going to be a lot on Nussmeyer's shoulders. Uh, and then defensively, it's a work in progress. I think the ceiling is what it is. Um, we're, we just need to see it now against, I think, South Alabama might be – I'll have to dive into more South Alabama tape, but – They can uh, put up points. They can put up points. On you know? teams they face. Yeah, they, they have a face. good coach. They have a scheme, you know, that they like. And so they're going to challenge LSU to be disciplined – and not make those mental mistakes that they've made the, the past couple games. So that's where I'm – I think it's a really good tune-up game, and I don't want to dismiss up Alabama as like an automatic win, but in theory it should be. It's a really good tune-up game for a bye week, and then you get into the teeth of SEC Yeah, you points. can't sleep through South Alabama. No, They'll no. score points on you. So that's why I like this game as opposed to if it was, a, you know, a random FCS lower-tier game. So – I like it. All right, that's it from uh, Tiger Stadium. 34-17 win, LSU 4-1 and one on the year, number 16 team in the country. We'll see if there's any shakeup in the polls, but 1-0 uh, in SEC play, and we're still not even to SEC game number two. That's still a few weeks away with uh, South Alabama at home next week in the bye week. So. Yep. Um, Recruit reactions. Our reactions are both already up. Thoughts on the game uh, at the Bengal Tiger. Hop on if you're not uh, a member yet, and then – Maddie B, get us out of here. What, subscribe and subscribe, like, like yeah. comment, share, all that good stuff. Um, we'll be back with a mailbag podcast uh, later this week. Um, but glad to have this out to y'all. Um, LSU gets the win. Let us know what you think in the comments down below. And subscribe to the Bengal Tiger on three. If you have not already, uh, message board's always going and active. Um, so, yeah, check us out over there. Uh, we will talk to y'all later.